for all those many years we went and didn't even stop to think about who was doing what. We owe it to him. Portugal. Thank you. Escudian, Escudian, Portugal. Thank you. Thank you. From my legs, thank you. From my feet, thank you. Somebody can do this, thank you. you try, the harder things get for you. And the same one, you go all out of your way to try and help. You find out that's the one on the other side of town right now, already putting your name out on the highway and out on the head. But you know, when you already know somebody don't like you, it just don't bother you so bad when they do something mean to you. But the one that stand up in your face, one that shake your hand with one hand, smile in your face and stab you in the back of all. makes you feel, but sometimes it makes me feel like I want to just throw up my hand. Because I don't know which way to go. Then I go home, sit down, put my face in my hand. And then my mind go back to how long already kept me. How far he's already brought me. How good he's already been to me. And that's when I just get up out of my seat. Ready my hand and tell him, Lord, I can't. Lord, I can't. Give him now. Sometimes I don't have no money, but I can't. Give him now.
Well, I could keep on playing that, folks. It's a great song. I can't give up. Lee Williams there talking. Or singing, I guess. He's got a great testimony. It's a... Uh, it's not just a testimony. It's really, I believe, a, a personal story for the fella. And you that's been uh, been around, you know, life is is uh, is difficult. Anybody tells you life's a piece of cake, well, they're they're hopped up on the weed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that Prozac, probably. Now, you millennials wouldn't smoke any weed, right? You wouldn't do any illegals, right? You millennials are white as pure driven snow, right? <laughs> you probably created stuff I don't even know about. You probably created synthetics from uh, some asteroid or something, right? <laughs> We're still stuck on the airplane glue, I guess. All right, let's take a look at things, folks. Hope you can see the board there. <coughs> this is the 0900 prayer request time. It's about you guys praying and believing God. The board today, let's take a look. Let's see where we're at today on the board. As I've been telling you, 0900 prayer request time, all of these little stars, these white stars, and then in there, if you, you can't see it there so much, but all these little white dots you see are little silver stars, real, and there's little hearts underneath there. But these, uh, Canada, different places in Canada, all over the United States, I haven't put one every time somebody from the United States or different countries, different cities in the world. But you can see Mexico, Puerto Rico, Caribbean, Costa Rica, South America, Brazil, <coughs> a lot of areas. <coughs> and then we come into Europe. You can see all over in Europe, up there in Sweden, Norway, UK all over. Africa, all the way down to South Africa, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Turkey, Iran, and just Kazakhstan, China, Northern India, South India, into Southeast Asia, into China, into Indonesia, and down into Australia, several places in Australia, and all the way down here into New Zealand. All right. This whole thing, folks, this is called the 0900 prayer request time. Let's take a look here at our views and heart count. This is as of yesterday. As of yesterday, we had 7,722 views, and our hearts are at 110,913 as of yesterday, May 2nd. All right. What's the purpose of this particular periscope site as you come up out of the depth of the ocean in your little submarine of life, right? What's the purpose here? Well, this is called the 0900 prayer request time, all right? So here's the color, right? And so who am I? My name's Norman Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, all right? So what is a Protestant Christian missionary? A Protestant Christian missionary is the people that believe only in the Protestant Christian Bible as the only divine inspired word from God to man. That's the Protestant Christian Bible. There's no other Bibles. Nothing. There's no Protestant denominational doctrines. There's no Roman Catholicism traditions. There's no Koran. There's all that. All rest of all of it is meaningless. The only divine inspired book from God to all of humanity, not just one little group, but to all of humanity, humanity, 
Humanity is the Protestant Christian Bible. And only the Protestant Christian Bible truths of Jesus, the Apostle, and the Evangelist are the guide for today's living for the spiritually born-again Christian. There is no other tradition. There are no... <coughs> Excuse me. There is no other. <clears throat> I'm broadcasting here in Missouri. My name is Norman Edgar. I'm 70 years old. My wife, Selma, who will be broadcasting today at 11 o'clock, she's 68. <clears throat> I've been a Protestant Christian missionary for 40 years. Five missionary tours into Southeast Asia. First missionaries up into this Himalayan mountain village called Napapat in Southeast Asia. And just recently returned from seven years in Mexico where the drug cartels and Zetas murdering, cutting people's heads off, body parts, hanging them off bridges in the very town I was in. Don't go to Mexico, folks. I, I just don't understand. It is a, it is an awful place. Anarchy reigns. There's no 911, folks. Your 911 is how much cash you got in your pocket. That'll get you out. And sometimes that won't work either. But most of the time it will. Total corruption, top to bottom. Everybody knows it and everybody accepts it. That's the problem with anarchy. This is the 0900 prayer request time. So, what is the Protestant Christian Bible? Where did it come from? Why is it the only book? All right. Let's take a look at this little sign. This will help you to see it. The Protestant Christian Bible, people ask me, where can I get that book? <laughs> the Protestant Christian Bible is the English Bible that was first translated into English in 1500. The Protestant Christian Bible is today's English Bible. Hi there. It is the only divine inspired word from God to man. That is the Protestant Christian Bible. There's no, there's no traditional teachings. There's no Protestant denominational doctrines. There's no Roman Catholic first pope stuff. It's all a figment of people's imagination. They make it up and believe it, folks. There's no historical record whatsoever of any of it. You understand? It's just what people write. I've, I've talked about this once before. You, you, I've, I've done some, I've done some extensive reading about the early church from a number of different angles, different authors secular viewpoint and non-secular and do you realize that the the spiritually born again christian early followers of jesus you don't read about them in history i've only read a couple of pages about the the believers but what you read about in all of his history is the the current religious powers that be that's what they write about that's not the church. That's like writing about a thug in a neighborhood. He doesn't, he controls the neighborhood because he's a thug. And religion controls people through power and control and peer pressure over their life. And if you didn't do what the Roman Catholic said, you got, you were executed. All right? And we're not talking about just saying, ah, hasta la vista, baby. They were talking about killing you. It's the same thing when Muslims came on the scene 600 AD. They did the same thing. Convert or die. Church of England, the Holy Wars, they did the same thing. Convert or die. Surrender. The Roman Catholic Pope, same thing. Surrender or die. These are the thugs. They're not the, they're not the followers of Jesus. They're, that's religious, political corruption to umpteenth degree. That's what we have today. There's nothing changed. Roman Catholic Church is a thuggery church. Protestant religionists are the same thugs, only in their different disguise. 
Who are the thugs? Who are the deceivers? Who's the antichrist? Do you think the devil's on your side and wants good things for your life? He's out to kill, maim, and destroy you. When his ultimate task, the devil, that is, spiritual force against God and Jesus, is that you will go to hell. And how is he going to get you to go to hell? By trying to convince you you don't need Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And the devil, he, he's got a lot of people to work with because we've got a lot of people that enjoy what? Sin. Greed, power, control, lust of the flesh is pleasurable, folks. Don't kid yourself. Don't mess with it because it'll suck you in. And before you know it, you're down a tube somewhere and you can't figure out how to get out. The devil has power. Don't ever think he's just some inane force that can't do anything to you. He can do things. He's got control. The greatest percentage of the 7 billion people people on this planet right today are not spiritually born again Christians. They reject this personal idea that you have to ask Jesus into your heart and he's got to be your personal Lord and Savior and you have to follow his teachings only. 99.9% .9 of the people in the world don't believe that, folks. But that's the only way you're going to get in that through that straight and narrow way the Bible says. Sounds like an impo impossible task for me and other Protestant Christians. Uh, there's millions of spiritually born again Protestant Christians that believe only in the Protestant Christian Bible. Not these fairyland hoodoo people like Osteen and uh, Copeland and, and uh, oh, these charlatans out for the, the Joyce Myers, the Franklin Billy Grahams. If you think <coughs> they're talking about salvation being born again, you're nuts. Their theme is about money. <coughs> and the good life. All right? It's real simple. I could tell you <coughs> a great, uh, matter of fact, in my life, 40 years as a Protestant Christian missionary, <coughs> I have been offered positions if I just tone down and tone off a lot of subjects and just go along with the prevailing winds of doctrine at the time, what people want to believe, what they, how they want to make their God to be like. That's what's going on today. You want to be one of the thousands down there in that arena with Osteen? Just think and just believe what you want and everything will be be fine. Do it, believe any way you want. Just be nice. Everything will be fine. Okay? <coughs> Today, <coughs> besides waiting for your prayer request, this is about you asking for prayer. Do you have a prayer request today? Is there something you want God to touch your life about today? Is there something that you've been waiting and wanting to ask God to help you with? Are you ready today to finally say, well, I'm going to take a step of faith and ask God to help me about whatever the situation is about in your life? Are you tired of playing that game today? Are you willing and ready today to take that step of faith and believe God can do it? Hey, hi there. Welcome. This is the 0900 prayer request time. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to ask God to help you to pray? Pray, prayer, request. Prayer, request is by you, you, you talking to God. Are you able to say, Abba, Father? Is he your father? Amen. Yesterday we kind of talked about a little bit. You have to, to become a spiritually born again Christian. You have to understand grace, justification, and repentance. Yesterday we talked about grace, right? Today we're going to talk a little bit about justification. All right. 
So we are, this is the 0900 prayer request. Who are we actually praying to? We're praying, hi there, we're praying to a spiritual substance called God. This spiritual substance called God, substantia. This spiritual substantia called God. All right? We're talking to this spiritual substance. You, you, <coughs> you cannot see God. I cannot see God. All right? <clears throat> We're going to pray to this spiritual substance called God. All right? So you're going to say, Father, I love you today. Now, let's just, let's just do step one here. How do you know that you're actually talking to God and not just talking to the wind. How do you know when you say, Father, I love you today? How do you know that this spiritual substance called God hears your prayer? Do you get some kind of uh, signal inside, the little Morse code, da 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 that you How do you know when God's talking to you? All right? How do you know when you say, Father, I love you, and I want to follow you, Lord? How do you know that God hears you? All right? Well, let's talk about that. All right? Again, my name is Missionary Norman Ector. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, and I'm here in Missouri in St. Charles. This is me, Protestant missionary, Norman Edgar, I'm 70, and my wife, Selma, is 68, and she'll be on. Hey, hi, welcome. Thank you very much for coming. How does God hear your prayer? Does God, does God hear your voice, or is there some Amen. Thank you. How does God hear your voice? Does God... Uh, I'm serious. Just think about this. <coughs> does God hear your voice when you say, God, I love you. Father, I love you. I want you to help me. Does God hear your voice? All right? You have one person that says no. Does God know? Only my mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Okay, but hey, I got something for you. All right, I got your answer. Totally your mom can hear you. Listen to this. Look at that. You see that? That's for you. Can you read that? <laughs> she laughs too, Selma. Uh -huh. Selma's in the other room. She heard me laughing. So <laughs> That's a great comment. Thank you very much for sharing. I needed a laugh this morning. <laughs> Love the humor, Norm. <laughs> Well, you're pretty good at it, too, so we're even, huh? <laughs> but I'm telling you, you see that? That is cool, is it not? Whatever. <laughs> when you get old, you don't look at the time as the same way, all right? <laughs> all right, so apart from your mom listening to you <laughs> when you're praying out loud, all right? <laughs> I bet your mom's got a little humor, too. <laughs> All right, look here. These three things, we understand these three things you need to understand to become a Christian. These are kind of the nuts and bolts of everything. 
But how does God actually hear you when you pray? Does he listen to your voice? Well, if you're deaf and can't speak, does God hear your prayer? Only people that can speak can pray to God? No. So, the New Testament says, the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament says that when we God knows our prayer <coughs> before we even pray it. So God, this spiritual substance called God, who created all, who knows is all powerful, knows everything that's going to happen. He knows what we're going to pray before we pray. But yet, he waits for us to do what we think we are doing. All right? Now, just follow my logic here a little bit, if you can. I don't know if you can or not. Whatever. <laughs> okay? But how is it that prayer can be heard? And we're going to go this, this route today. We're going to talk about justification justification in other words <clears throat> why should God listen to your prayer why okay why why should God <coughs> listen to your prayer are you special are you God's little favorite and so, oh man, he's going to listen to you and not, oh, so-and-so over there. Does God pick and choose who he listens to? Say, oh, I like you. I like the way, you're, I like the way you part your hair. Oh, I don't like you because of the color shirt you wear. Does God pick and choose? How is it that God hears your prayer and knows everything that you're going to pray before you pray. How can that be? So do you even have to pray? Is it necessary for you to pray? If God already knows, so hey. If God knows when you're going to live and die, and even if he knows everything about your life, who you're going to marry, how many children you got, just live and let live. Have a good time. God knows it all. Everything's under control. I can do anything I want. God's going to take care of me. All right. He knows. If I die today, I die today. Let's go out and drink and party and have a good time. Is that what it's about? Is that what praying is about? So, how, how are you, you the person, the person that is not, not spiritually born again. How is it that you can communicate with God? You the skeptic, you the unbeliever, you that are not living for God. How can you communicate with this God, the spiritual substance called God? Justified. Justification. You stand justified before God. It's almost like a fellow walk up to you and say, Look, Norm, here, here's a blank check for $10,000. You can go to the bank and, and get it. So I take that blank check. I go to the bank. I hand it to the teller. The teller says, Oh, you're good for ten grand because... Mr. X over here is guaranteed that you're justified through his signature. So I get my 10000 The very next day, I get another check for $100,000. I go to the bank and I say, okay. Okay, great. Great, I'm glad to hear that you're a believer and true lover of God. I hope you mean Jesus as God too. I hope that's involved in your little statement there. So you go to the bank with this check for $100,000 and you give it to the teller. The teller looks at the check and says, oh, yes, you're justified to cash this check because Mr. X signed this check. He justifies your payment. So I get my $100,000. 
And the final example is I receive another check. I, and the next check is for a million dollars. So I go to the bank. I give it to the teller. The teller's okay. Looks at everything. And so he'll say, Mr. Edgar, that's me, Mr. Edgar. Mr. Norman Edgar, your check isn't signed. It's not justified. It's not authorized by anyone. But I received the check the same way. It came in the mail, everything. He just forgot to sign it. So go ahead and cash it. I'm sorry. It has to be authorized. It has to have a signature. It has to be justified before us with a signature. We can't cash it. Justification. When you... For example, when you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, it's just like walking into that bank. You have a check, and the signature on that check says the blood of Jesus Christ. And you can cash in on that check in God's bank. So when you walk in that bank, you say, I'm here by the blood of Jesus Christ. And the bank teller says, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir, what is it I can do for you today? But if you don't have that on there, if you don't have the signature on there, what do you do then? Well, you know what's going to happen if you walked into a bank and you try to cash a check. What's that bank? Now, normally, normally, what's the bank going to do? The bank is going to call that person on that check, that address and company or person on that check and say, look, we got a check here. Did you write this check and forget to sign it? And that person's going to say, in this example of the blood of Jesus, he'll say, yes, I signed that check. That person didn't know that I signed it for his life. And that person's going to come, that teller's going to come back and tell the person who tried to cash that check, say, look, I called the person that authorized this check by the blood of Jesus. That's a signature for your prayer to be answered. And he said, he gave the okay for you. The blood of Jesus Christ covers all people of the world. So you can go to God's bank and say, hey, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, Heavenly Father, to help me. And you can be a non-believer, an atheist, a skeptic. It doesn't make any difference. When you go to God's bank, in other words, when you go to the Creator, this spiritual substance called God, and you ask in the name of Jesus, this spiritual substance, and within this spiritual substance, we find that Jesus is there, the Holy Spirit is there, and the Father are there. Co-equal in power, inseparable within this spiritual substance called God. We now understand that since the Protestant Christian writings of the New Testament, reading the words of Jesus when he talks about praying to the Father, when we read the words of Jesus saying that he ascended up on high at the right hand of the Father, <coughs> we understand the words of the Protestant Christian Bible. When we read of Stephen being stoned to death, and he looks up, he has a heavenly vision, and he states he sees Jesus at the right hand of the Father. We read the words of Jesus when he says that he sent in the Holy Spirit now when he ascends from being resurrected from death. That the Holy Spirit now descends upon this earth and is now here, 2016, May the 3rd. <clears throat> He's here now, the Holy Spirit. We understand this spiritual substance, and within this spiritual substance, these three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, when Jesus stated that all the new believers are to be water baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It's the Father's grace. 
grace, God's power, strength, love, and favor that condescends down to all human beings. And today we're talking about justified. Justified. You're justified to ask God in Jesus' name by the blood of Jesus Christ. If you're a Muslim today, you got the same banking rights as a person that's a Roman Catholic. You're both spiritually lost. You're in the wilderness. Religious Protestants in the wilderness. You, along with the, the Islamists, the Buddhists, the Hindus, the Jehovah Witnesses, the Mormons, Messianics, a whole handful of Pentecostals, the Benny Hens, the Osteens, the Franklin and Billy Grahams, lost, Southern Baptists, lost. People who believe in predestination, lost. They're in the wilderness. They're unsaved. They're not spiritually born again. Can they communicate with God? Can they pray to God? Yes, they can. But you understand, they get a, they get a signal from God, and that signal is called a message. It's called the gospel message of Jesus Christ. You want full payment on your prayer, then you're going to have to become a believer in the one that's signing the check. And the check is signed by the Lord Jesus and his blood. Now, if you don't believe in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, if you think you don't have to obey them, you just tore that check up. And you're doing it in your own strength. You can believe all the religious hokey pokey you want. You can do all this goofy stuff and and send in all your money. Make all the pilgrims, pilgrimages. You can say all the rosaries you want to say. Amen. <coughs> Justify. You're justified. You're, you, I, I just can't tell you how, how, it's a great feeling to know that you're justified. Justified before God. He's taking care of you from the beginning to the end of your life. He's with you all the way. He knows when you're going to go down. He knows when you're going to get depressed. He knows when you're not going to want to continue. He, he, he knows it all. He knows everything about you. But he doesn't violate your will. Hey, thank you, daughter. God bless you back, okay? God loves you. God loves us. God loves me. But you got to be faithful to the Lord. This isn't, well, I'm going to do it for a while and everything's going to be okay. I, now, let me tell you something. And now this is going to be a little hard for some of you to swallow out there to be giving me all these nice comments here. But I want to tell you something. And here's, this is the honest, naked truth, okay? I'm a gospel singer. Well, really, I, the gospel singer doesn't mean much to me. Okay, I'm going to tell you the truth. Um, listen, listen to what I'm going to say here, and you might not want to come back again. All right? A spiritually born-again person. Now, I'm talking about being spiritually born again. I'm not talking about, be, about being raised in the church. You understand? I'm not talking about being a pastor. That doesn't make you a spiritually born-again person. Church mother church father, elder, that doesn't make you a spiritually born-again Christian. You can be a Sunday school teacher, an elder, deacon. That doesn't make you a spiritually born-again person. Now listen to this, listen to this. You can sit in the church house and you can say, or listen to a person say to you or others, just close your eyes, bow your head if you want to accept Jesus, raise your hand. And folks will raise their hand. And you have other folks saying, well, now if you just recite this prayer, the sinner's prayer, 
And you'll have people recite that prayer. And in some, you have them come up to the front of the church house. And they'll shake their hand, welcome to the church. And they, after they listen to the church rules, and then, okay, I agree to pay my tithes. I agree to do all this, a blah, 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 whatever. <coughs> that person believes with all their mind, heart, and soul, and they'll feel good for a while. That they have, they're a Christian. And you ask them, oh yeah, I'm born again. All right, they'll say the words. They'll read the Bible. They'll pray. Everything. They do it a whole nine yards. So how do you know if a person's truly and spiritually born again? How do you, how, what is the real test to find out? Well, in my 40 years of doing this, it becomes really easy. But for, for the people that are religionists, it's difficult. The Protestant religionists, and this is the Trinity Pentecostal folks too, all right? Now, and there's no exceptions to this rule. The Protestant religionists are the biggest hypocrites, religious hypocrites on the planet. They have caused more, uh, they have created what we have today. The people that are religious hypocrites, Protestant religious hypocrites. Roman Catholics are not spiritually born again. They're a cult. Islam is a cult. There are spiritually born again people. There's millions of spiritually born again people. Spiritually born again people are people that believe only in the Protestant Christian Bible as the divine inspired word from God to man. And only the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament truths of Jesus the Apostle and Evangelist are the only rule and guide today for the spiritually born again. Now hold on, just listen. And only the truths from the Protestant Christian Bible. There are no, absolutely no religious doctrine by any Protestant denomination that is the ruling God for your life today. None, zero, none. No ancient tradition, no modern tradition, none, zero, zero, all right? Now, <clears throat> the spiritually born again Christian will follow only the teachings of Jesus, the apostle and evangelist. Now get this, that means that they follow only the truths and teachings, this is important, they follow the truth and teachings that you, the spiritually born again, understand. Not what I explain to you or you read a book or someone explains to you this is what this means. No, it doesn't work like that. You understand, in judgment, you're not going to be able to say to Jesus, well, my pastor said this means this, and I went along with that. It sounded good to me. It doesn't work like that. There's only one teacher of the spiritually born again, and that's in Luke 12, 12. It says the Holy Spirit will teach and bring all things to your remembrance. <coughs> when we spiritually born again people, read the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist, you have to understand what you're reading. God is going to hold you accountable, you, not to what I think you should do or what I think this verse means, but what you, when you read the Protestant Christian I want to be born again. 
all right? What is your name that wrote that? I want to be born again. Your first name. What's your first name? <coughs> the person that wrote that, I want to be born again. What's your first name? Person that wrote, I want to be born again. What's your first name? Oh, Karen. Oh, Karen. In Israel, right? You still in Israel? And Karen, you have to refresh my memory, but how old are you again? Thirty-nine. All right, let's see if I remember everything you've been communicating with uh, with uh, Selma too. And you're not a, a Jewish. Are you married, Karen? I, I guess. And did you? Yes. And is your is your husband? Is he? Is he Jewish? Are you Palestinian or what? What's going on? Okay. So, are you guys? Are you from are you from the states? Are you and your husband from the states originally? You, you know. I'm trying to get some kind of background so that when I share I'll have a better understanding. This is the 0900 prayer request. I got a question out there. I'm waiting for a reply here. Are you and your husband, are you from the States? That's to Karen. And your husband. Now what's the status of your husband? Is he from the States? I guess. I don't I have no idea. <laughs> <coughs> He's a Christian from Israel. Are his parents Jewish? No. What does your husband, Karen, what does your husband think about you wanting to be spiritually born again? What does your husband think about that? Does your husband 
want to be spiritually born again also? Is your husband watching this broadcast now? Has your husband ever watched these broadcasts from our website? They're all recorded. Well, Karen, I'm, I'm waiting on uh, I'm waiting on the Lord to establish my thoughts of the response I want to give to you about you wanting to be spiritually born again. So I guess, Karen, today you go to a Christian church there in Israel, I guess. Is that, am I correct in that assumption that you attend a Christian church in Israel? So... Is there a reason that you don't ask the Christian church the same things you're saying to me? That you, have you asked this Christian church, that have you stated to them that you want to be spiritually born again? Have you said that to the Christian church that you attend? And what do they say? Ah, thank you. Thank you for that greeting. I'm talking with a person in uh, Israel, and it's about being spiritually born again. Hi, hey Russia. Karen, uh, can I? <coughs> Turkey, hey, hi Turkey. This will sound kind of a simple question, Karen, but. Why do you believe <clears throat> why do you believe Selma and I when we're saying to the world that the world needs to be born again that people need to be spiritually born why do you believe us and not take the advice of the church you attend 
we're, we're kind of strangers to you, right? I mean, in one sense. Why is it that you seek help from us and not receive what your church is saying? Well, I'm, I'm sure you pray, don't give me, don't, but why are you saying to me, you want to be spiritually born again? And why would you listen to me and not to the spiritual group you're involved in there in Israel? But doesn't it seem strange to you, Karen, doesn't it seem just a little strange to you that you're asking a person on Periscope, husband and wife, Selma and I, about being spiritually reborn the single greatest decision in all of your life that you'll ever make, no matter who's, who's involved with it, I mean, as far as the actual people, but this greatest single decision in your life, Karen, and you're saying to me that your husband knows nothing about us, has not listened to anything we've said or anything, and you haven't shared anything with him and you state that he supports you whatever you decide to do doesn't that sound little strange to you the reason that you should be wanting to be spiritually born again is not because I seem to be pleasant or happy when you hear me, or Selma, my wife, that shouldn't be the reason. We're talking about life and death, eternity. We're talking about heaven and hell. And you're a married woman. Doesn't it seem strange that this conversation hasn't taken place with your own husband? And that you would have him to see what he says about everything? If you're co-equal in marriage, it's not you alone or not him alone. The word says that you two are one. One. Not two separate people going to support you, you do this and I'll do that. No. Together, And the most important thing in your whole life is your spiritual relationship with God. Your one spiritual relationship with God, the husband and the wife. You guys are co-equal. There's one in leadership position, but that leadership position is, is only that. It's not a control position. You're in a co-equal relationship. Not one lording it over the other, all right? No way. But something seems to be out of whack here, all right? I hope you can understand my, my point of view here. You're asking me the greatest spiritual thing of your life, and your husband doesn't know anything about it except he supports you. And a Christian church you're going to says, pray more. I 
Just think about it. Just think about it. I know this is probably not the answers that you've been hoping to hear. But you're not in this thing by yourself. You have someone that God says is you, and that's your husband. You're not two individuals. You're one in the eyes of the Lord. And whatever that, whatever that is, that oneness has to be in the Lord. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Forty years. Amen. Oh, nine hundred prayer request time. Amen. It's about you guys praying and asking God. Today we're talking about understanding these three things: grace, justification, and repentance. But today we're talking about justifying, being justified before God. What is God looking for for you to be spiritually born again? It's going to be you to understand that you, you cannot become a Christian. All right, now just listen. You, out there in Periscope land, Turkey, Istanbul, Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Penang, Norway, Sweden, Canada, Mexico, Costa Rica, Brazil. You cannot become a Christian. You in Russia, you cannot become a Christian. You cannot one day say, hey, today's my day. I want to become a Christian. I've decided to convert. I want to stop this old life and I'm going to begin a new life in the church. I want to be a good person. I'm going to go to church. I decide to stop the drinking, party, and sex, and all that. I know it's going to be difficult, but I want to be a Christian. I'm tired of running around and all that, having the headaches from drinking and fighting or whatever, arguing. I'm going to be a good person. I'm going to church. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to volunteer in church. I'm going to be a good person. You can't be a good person. I mean, you can, but it doesn't make any difference. Grace. The only way you can understand and how to become a Christian is through grace. Grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor that condescends down to you. You. I want you to look at this. Look at this sign. And I want you to see how important... God condescending down to you to explain to you that without God's power, strength, love, and favor condescending down to you, enabling you to become a Christian, you couldn't do it. You can't, you can't raise your hand in church and say, I want to be a Christian. <laughs> All right? You can do that. You can say you do a lot of things, but I don't make it so. Now look what God says. Now I want you to read this. Look at this. I hope you can read this, son. All right, let me get it out here in the front a little bit better. <coughs> this is in the book of Ephesians. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. It is by grace. Grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor to all 7 billion people on the planet. Grace is God's power reaching down, condescending down from heaven, enabling all people to seek Him out. Grace. It is by grace you have been saved. Become a Christian, spiritually born again, by grace, through faith in Jesus. And this faith is not from yourself. It is the gift of God. What is the gift of God? <clears throat> grace. 
grease. If you thought, and this is a key, <coughs> if you thought <coughs> for one moment that you have done something, that you have earned something that you're a Christian because you're faithful to the church house because you go to church every week or you pay your tithes every week or you clean the church house every week. If you think you're being faithful going to choir practice and if you think that's part of your duty and that, that secures your Christianity, you're, you're lost and going to hell. Grace, grace justifies you before God. This grace helps you to understand the gospel story. Grace helps you to understand and believe in God, the spiritual substance called God. Grace helps you to even believe that. Grace, God condescends down to us, helps us, our mental physical understanding, our nuts and bolts of life, his power, strength, love and, fa love and favor from God come down to help us. He doesn't force us to make us a robot. His love, and if you've been spiritually born again, let me tell you something. The greatest single thing that you will experience when you're spiritually born again is God's Love and forgiveness and acceptance. In a twinkling of an eye. When you meet God's requirements. It's not something that dribbles into your life over years and years. It doesn't happen that way. <coughs> when you give birth to a child, it happens. It might take a couple several hours, but it's going to happen. And when that baby leaves the birth canal, life on the outside begins. I know something about that a little bit. I've delivered six of my children, six of them, no doctor, no hospital, one in a tent. My wife and I, that's it. Birth is a beautiful, beautiful, wonderful experience. The human birth to actually hold that baby down in your hands and see that baby move and open their eyes and look at you and just it's love divine. Hey, hi there. When you're spiritually born again, let me tell you something. When you're spiritually born again, that this this love you feel for your own baby dolls is magnified a thousand million times God's forgiveness in your life and acceptance of you. You are so humbled and that you'll fall down on your knees and thank God for His love. It's When you become spiritually born again, it's not just feeling love, it's feeling accepted, it's feeling forgiven. God loves you guys. Okay. We love you. I know you don't speak good English, okay? This is that grace. That grace comes from God. That love comes from God. That love. Why do you think people, spiritually born again people, keep in the faith so long? You think they're robots and they got to do it? No. It's this word, grace, love, God's love. And if you don't stay with your lover, you're going to fall away and run off with some other person. That's the same. God uses that analogy over and over and calls the fall away Jewish people a whore and after other whores and prostitutes. After going after strange gods. That's what's going on in the United States of America right now. Strange gods. You got so many false teachers from the Osteens and Billy and Franklin Grahams to the Kenneth Copelands to the, uh, <laughs> there's just, there's so many folks I can't even begin to name them all. 
they go into these overpriced, rip-off Christian bookstores that are a part devil. They'll sell you anything to make a book. They'll sell you Buddhist prayer beads if they can make a dollar on it. They're unscrupulous. They're, people are not Christian, not spiritually born again. They're after the money, and that's how you tell the filthy lucre of these people that say they're spiritually born again. From the Osteens down there to the Joyce Myers to the Benny Hens, they're, they are, they are the wolves. They'll take you for everything you got. And make you feel like it's your fault at the end. <laughs> and you're a failure. You're missing God. And they, and they are the ones doing the great things. Because look how happy we are. Look how joyous we are. Because look at my life. And maybe Karen in Israel is seeing that. She's looking at my life with Selma, my wife, and saying, Wow, you guys seem so happy. You seem so up on top of things. I want to be a spiritually born again because I want to be like you guys. Well, that's the air. There's no way you should want to be like me or my wife Selma. We are not your justification. The justification is Jesus and Jesus alone. If you substitute Jesus for my good life, I want to become a Christian I want to believe like you do, Norman, because you seem to come across on Periscope as a, as you got a lot of humor and fun. You seem like a real nice kind of guy, and and there, and I've been watching you for weeks now, and you seem really nice. And I want to have what you got. You can't put my life as the atonement for your sins. You can't be like me. You don't want to be like me. You want to be like Jesus. Amen? Justification. What do you think Osteen, this guy Osteen, this mega church in Texas, what do you think his calling card is? He's a hoodoo preacher man. I've seen those guys in South, the I've been a missionary 40 years. I've heard this same garbage that Osteen talks on the mission field in Southeast Asia. And here it is, real quick. Billy Graham, Franklin Graham say the same thing. They're all antichrist preachers. Let me tell you something. Don't believe a word they say. Here's the theme. I first picked up on it in Asia. And it was, I listened to these other senior missionaries on the mission field 35, 40 years ago. And I, and I, I, I just didn't want to connect the dots. I saw the dots clearly, but I just didn't want to connect. I'm thinking, oh, maybe something, whatever. Because I'm the new guy on the block. But even the new guy on the block could see. And it didn't take me, after several months, I began to see this isn't right. And here is the thing about these Presbyterian Methodists <clears throat> liberal theology that dominates the United States of America in theologies, liberal theologies. They are antichrist. They are of the devil. They no more want to follow the truths of Jesus, the apostle of Angela, than a man in the moon. This Olsteen guy should be run out like they run out Joseph Smith out of Missouri for his lustful all, all Joseph Smith, the leader of the Mormons, wanted was a shack up with a woman. That's all he wanted. And the more he could get, the happier he was. He was a phoniest false prophet walking. And just to think we were going to nominate somebody to be the president of the United States that thinks this guy is a spiritual guy. They're, they're, yeah. In Asia. Here's the way it works. I was told by one of the leading lifelong foreign missionaries from Europe in Asia. He spent time in Laos, Cambodia, Thailand. 
the prevailing wisdom is this, that all the good people, the Buddhist people, and whatever else, animist, whatever, that all these good Buddhist priests and monks and all the women that worked in the temples, we have the temple women too, you know, all of these, all these good Buddhist people that prayed to Buddha, that made their animal sacrifices, food sacrifices, money, built the temples, worshiped the Buddha, were going to heaven. And the reason that they're going to heaven, not because of Jesus. No, 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 no. The common Osteen, Franklin Graham, Billy Graham doctrine of today is the same as it was 35 years ago, 40 years ago, when I started as a Protestant Christian missionary. They believe, as they do yet today, that all people are going to heaven and that you're going to be judged by God for your good life. And that's the reason you're going to heaven. Billy Graham states on his YouTube video, you don't even need to know the name of Jesus. God's going to judge your life. Now you'd be surprised how many people believe that garbage. The Southern Baptists suck it up. Methodists, Presbyterian, Messianics love it. Especially those that are part Jew and part Gentile. They love it because they all believe they're the good people. You ever notice the, the racist people in religion are all the people that think they're the religious people and going to heaven and everybody else is going to hell. And they're always in that crowd that's going to heaven. And everybody else is going to hell. I began to see in Southeast Asia 40 years ago that they did not believe in the Protestant Christian Bible. They believe as Osteen, the Benny Hens, Joyce Myers, Franklin, Billy Graham, they believe their own made up doctrines. And they write books after books after books after books. And you people out there, Eat it up, you millennials and Generation X. Why, poor gay? Why? Because it's good to your ear. I am a Protestant Christian missionary. So everyone will go to heaven? <laughs> In the liberal theology, everyone's going to heaven. But no. No, no, the only way you go to heaven is when you're spiritually born again. And to be spiritually born again, you got to understand grace, justification, and repentance. That's the gospel message. Your glasses is beautiful. Yeah, thank you very much. They are. It was, these glasses are a gift. Okay. And I, I thank the Lord. It's a gift for my wife. She works for an eyeglass company and they got a super discount. Or I could not afford these glasses because I'm not rich. Uh, on, you might think I have a smartphone, but I don't. Well, I'm broadcasting on an $89 Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 Nook. That's what I'm using to broadcast on. And I got a little Dynex uh, tripod stand I rigged up to put the the seven inch Tab Four Nook on so I can broadcast. I'm not a rich guy, and never I've never I'm 70 years old. I'm not wealthy. I would be what you call lower middle class. I thank the Lord that our house now is paid for. Our car's going to be paid for in a, in a month. 
We have a 215 model car, and we're going to have it paid off in a month. Lord willing. <coughs> we're not rich folks, guys. I don't sell stuff. All right? I'm a, I receive Social Security, and I receive a veteran's uh, disability payment, too. And God's blessed us to be able to, my wife still works about 20 hours a week at an eyeglass place. And she, she, uh, I'm telling you, I believe that, if you believe that Jesus died on the cross, you go to heaven. Well, if you're a Southern Baptist, thank you for your coming, but you're not saved. You're not a Christian. You're a Southern Baptist. Okay. All right, I mean, that's just the truth. You're just like a Roman Catholic. You're not saved, you're just a religionist. You're just like a religious Protestant, a Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian. Seven-day Adventist, Mormon, Jehovah Witnesses, you're all the same. You're not spiritually born again. You're a Southern Baptist. I pray to God and ask for forgiveness. Well, I don't know. Well, what do you think the Roman Catholics do? What do you think the Buddhists do? What do you think the Islamists do? They pray to their God too. It's meaningless. You can pray to God all you want. I mean, you want the truth or you want me to sweet talk you and say, oh, that's wonderful. You can go on Periscope these other prayer request sites and they'll they'll bite right into it and say everything. Are you a Christian? I'm a spiritually born again Christian, yes. Now, but what you probably don't understand is that a Christian doesn't mean spiritually born again. A Christian is a name tag. Being a Christian you have to be spiritually born again. And most people, 99% of the people today are clueless about becoming a spiritually born again Christian. They go to a church and listen to a church doctrine. And they follow a church doctrine from their little tot in school, Sunday school, or whatever. And they actually believe they're a Christian. They actually think they are Bible followers. Actually believe it. Donate their time, build houses, do good works for people, all that. And they think they're a Christian. They believe all their leaders are Christian. And they're anti-Christ doctrine. And religionists are known for their anti-Christ doctrine. Why do you think anti-Christ religious doctrines are so strong? Well, I don't believe you. Okay, I know, I know you, you took the time to chat that out to me. But you're a, you're a Southern Baptist. And until you renounce that anti-Christ faith, you'll never be spiritually born again. Now, World Council of Churches will accept you. Every major, every major religious denomination will accept you. But God doesn't. You're not spiritually born again. You're a follower of an anti-Christ doctrine, and you refuse to reject it. You can pray to God all you want. Do I believe in God? Thank you for your comment. Sure. This is the 0900 prayer request time. For the, for the Southern Baptist. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. I know what you're, I believe in one God. Yes, I know who you're, I know. Why don't you, you that believe in one God, why don't you go ahead and make your statement about Allah 
and go ahead go ahead and say everything okay go ahead get it off your chest i'll give you the floor shall we say you go ahead put allah everything go ahead put that on there go ahead say it you don't you know all right all right and for the southern baptist writer I will ask you this question. Have you seen a YouTube video of Billy Graham and Reverend Schuler? Have you seen that video? Reverend Graham, Billy Graham, and Schuler, where Billy Graham says you don't even need to know Jesus to go to heaven. Have you seen that? No, sir. Okay. All right. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. I think I got... Let's... Hold on a second. I want you to hold on there, my Southern Baptist guy, or lady. I'm not sure what it is, but hold on a second. Just hold on. I'm going to play this for you. Hold on. All right, hold on here. Oh, shoot. Oh, I hope you're still with me. Yeah, it looks like it's still working. All right. All right, let me uh, just hold on a second. <laughs> ah, well, hold on. Hold on, let me get this up. Okay, hold on. Wait. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to drop the thing. Alright, hold on. Hold on. World of the Buddhist world, I think everybody that, that loves. Tell me, what do you think is the future of Christianity? Hold on. I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ. All right, I want you to listen to this now. I'm not going to... What do you think is the future of Christianity? I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. And that's what God is doing today. He's calling people for out of the, the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world. Uh, they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus, but uh, they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have. And they All right, now I'm going to play this part again. I want you, this is no, there's no, there's no trickery here. This is his actual words. I want you to just listen. Tell me, what do you think is the future of Christianity? I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. And that's what God is doing today. He's calling people for, out of the, the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world. Uh, they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus, but uh, they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have, 
and they turn to the only light that they have, and I think that they are saved, and they're going to be with us in heaven. This is fantastic. I'm so thrilled to hear you say that. There is a wideness in God's mercy. There is. There definitely is. All right. Now. Tell me, what do you think is the future of Christianity? I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. And that's what God is doing to All right. Hold on. Hold on with me. Hold on. I can't read anything because I'm moving you around, jerking this thing around. Sorry about that. Okay. Now, you got to see that. Okay, that's on YouTube. You can pull up yourself. Reverend Schuler and Billy Graham. All right? All right? Now, you just heard that. You heard that people are going to heaven, don't know Jesus, don't know a thing, but they're going to heaven. Because why? Because God wants them there. All right? Okay. That's not true. What is not true? If you don't mind me asking, what's not true? What he said. That's right. Do you know that Billy Graham is the leader of the Southern Baptist Convention? Do you know that? And Franklin Graham, his son, believes the same thing. Oh, okay. Well, do you know who Billy Graham is? And Franklin Graham, do you know who they are? Do you know who Franklin and Billy Graham are? Graham Crusades and all that? Yes. What country are you in? What country are you in about your son in Mongoloid? All right, and deaf. What, what country are you in? And what region of the country are you in? Are you in the flatlands? No, I don't know. I'm in the USA. My goodness. Well, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Are you, are you a really young person? Eleven. Oh, you're eleven years old. Oh, well. Wow. Well, son, I, are you a male or female, I guess? What's your first name, anyway? Okay, well, I just said, my name's Norman, Protestant Christian Missionary. Uh, our website, How to Become a Christian. Boy, okay, what's your first name? Boy, <laughs> okay, what's your first name? Jay, okay, pray for my men. Okay, all right, uh, Jay, hold on. The person asking for prayer for the deaf and mongoloid, what country are you in? I have a reason for asking, okay? What country are you in? person that asked for prayer for their uh, friend, Ben. Okay. Kazakhstan, are you in the mountains? Are you in the mountain region of Kazakhstan? Or is Ben always been... <laughs> Has Ben lived near the rivers? 
Ocean. What part of Kazakhstan? Are you in the center? Kazakhstan? There's Kazakhstan right there. All right. Here's Kazakhstan. All right. What's the elevation? Do you know the elevation approximately how many meters or feet above sea level? If you don't mind me asking, I have a reason for asking. Good day. Ah, okay, good day. All right. 0900 prayer request time. Oh, 0900 prayer request time. I haven't forgotten you, Jay. Okay, good. Not sure. Okay. Uh, has been been checked for iodine? And uh, is his neck the thyroid? Um, Ben's neck, the thyroid. Is the thyroid enlarged? And does Ben's hands, Ben's hands, are they fat, you know, fat, like, you know, big fingers, like fat. And is his tongue, is his tongue fat? And does he have goiters, meaning uh, swell up lumps like this on his throat, thyroid? Okay, goodbye, Kazakhstan. All right, uh, Jay. And Jay, I, I'm sorry that I'd be the one to have to say this to you, but you're just being deceived, son. And uh, to be a Christian, number one, number one thing about being a Christian, don't listen to me. Don't listen to anyone else. I mean, obey your mother and father, okay, and elders. Obey, okay. But the relationship with Jesus, Jay. To become a spiritually born again Christian, you're going to have to you're going to have to read the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, the words of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. There's only one book inspired from God to man, and that's the Protestant Christian Bible. No interpretations of that. No church tradition. No denominational books, writings, or interpretations from me or anyone else. The Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist, are the only rule and guide for today's spiritually born-again Christian. So, Jay, you need to read the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. And then you, you, Jay, will then understand what you read. Don't, Jay, don't go and get buy a book or get a book or ask somebody, what does this mean? What does that mean? Luke 12, 12 says, the Holy Spirit of God will teach you and bring all things to your remembrance. And Jay, God is able to speak to you through the word. You have to understand the words of Jesus, not what I think they say or not what your pastor says or somebody else says, your mommy or daddy. No, you're going to have to understand. You're held accountable for your words, you. 
You have to read. You're 11 years old. You're in the U.S. You can read. All right? You're only held accountable for what you understand before God, not what someone else thinks you should understand. No. So my advice to you, Jay is that you stop this stuff about people. Don't look to people. I know it's difficult because you're a young, tender age, okay? But look, read the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. That's the only rule and guide for today. There's nothing in the Protestant Christian Bible, Old Testament, that are the rule for today. The Old Testament gives us the historical background to bring all of what the New Testament says to be fulfilled. It's in the New Testament. Okay. Read the basic truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. And when someone says something about some spiritual thing, you, Jay, will know because you will know the words of Jesus, the apostle and evangelist. And you can see this is what Jesus said. And that's how you base your decisions about everything. You, Jay, base your decision on what I say or what my wife Selma was going to say at 11 o'clock. She's coming on at 11, Jay. You listen to what she says, and it better it better tune up with, with what God's Word says. New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. Now, mind you, Jay, listen. You have to understand the Word yourself. You can't go running to somebody and say, Hey, what? go to a Sunday school class. I don't understand what this means. Can you explain to me what this means? They're not God. They're going to give you their opinion. And to be honest with you, Jay, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. You pray. The Bible says you seek and knock and it shall open unto you. Ask God in the name of Jesus. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Knock and it shall be open. That's not true. He doesn't need the Holy Spirit of God to understand the Word of God. The Holy Spirit of God was written for the sinner. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you, Jay, stay away from religious people. Even me. I, I wouldn't, you need to sit back, Jay, that's 11 years old. You need to read the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. You, Jay, read that. You, Jay, are only held accountable for what you understand. So don't think you have to understand all these deep spiritual truths or whatever. That's a bunch of humbug anyway. <laughs> what did Jesus say? He said, hey, love God with all your mind, heart, and soul. Number two, love your neighbor as yourself. That's a great commission call. If you love somebody, you're going to jerk them out of that hellfire, okay? And the only way you're going to do this is through the gospel message, all right? All right, Jay, God bless you, all right? Look, folks, I got to get off. My wife, Selma, is coming on at 11 o'clock in about 10 minutes. It's been a good time today, all right? 0900 prayer request time. See you guys. I'm here again tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. <clears throat> Amen. See you guys. Talk to you tomorrow. Amen.